it, you know, well, that's there, but when Madanga is kirtan. Here we go. Mr. M. Just in time for the Madanga. It's right here. Hey, whoa. Ready to go. When we chant Hari Bo, that means we're ready to go. We're not slow.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare, Krishna, Krishna. Hari Hari Ram 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 Ha Ha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Ha Ha Hare Hare Ram Ha Ram Ram Hari Hari Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Krishna Nithai Gaur Nithai Gaur Hari Bho Hari Bho Hari Bho Gaur Hari Bho Hari Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Prabhu Pa Jaya Prabhu Pa Go Pimanandi Hari Hari Bo Shira Prabhu Pa Ki Jaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is uh, chapter 8 verses 5 and 6 I'll do two Ante kale chamame vaha Smarta mukta kale varam Yad prayanti samad bavam Yanti nasyatra samsayaha And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature, well, of this there is no doubt. Yam yam vapi sparam bhavam Taktva jyante kalevaram Tam tam evaiti konteya Sadata bhava bhavitaha Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. Mm -hmm. And this is a read in the purport for verse number five. In this verse, the importance of Krishna consciousness is stressed. Anyone who quits his body in Krishna consciousness is once transferred to the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is the purest of the pure. Therefore, anyone who is constantly Krishna conscious 
is also the purest of the pure. The word smaram, remembering, is important. Remembrance of Krishna is not possible for the impure soul who has not practiced Krishna conscious and devotional service. Therefore, one should practice Krishna conscious from the very beginning of life. If one wants to achieve success at the end of life, the process of remembering Krishna is essential. Therefore, one should constantly and senselessly chant the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Lord Chaitanya has advised that one be as tolerant as a tree, Tayor Iva Suhishnuna. There may be so many impediments for a person who is chanting Hare Krishna. Nonetheless, tolerating all these impediments, one should chant, continue to chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, at the end of one's life, one can have the full benefit of Krishna consciousness. The purport of the next verse, the process of changing one's body at the critical moment of death is here and explained. A person who at the end of life quits his body thinking of Krishna attains the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. But it is not true that a person who thinks of something other than Krishna attains the same transcendental nature. This is the point we should note carefully. How can we die in the proper state of mind? Hmm. That is important. If in one's present life one lives in the mode of goodness and always thinks of Krishna, it is possible for one to remember Krishna at the ends of his life. That will help one be transferred to the transcendental nature of the Lord. If one is transcendentally absorbed in Krishna's service, then in his next body will be a transcendental spiritual body, not material. Therefore, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama is the best process for successfully changing one's state of being at the ends of one's life. And Krishna goes on with the same thing in the following verses. And this is the importance of... Uh, right, uh, life is actually a pre preparation for death. It's not life is something you do, you enjoy your senses, and then somehow when you get old, when you can't enjoy your senses anymore, then you become Krishna conscious. No. Um, as we prepare our consciousness, uh, we have to use the time that is available because consciousness is something that is easily affected by our past activities and our past and our present desires. So in order to purify our activities and to uh, transform our desires to spiritual desires, one has to think of Krishna. <laughs> so the, there's different ways that one can think of Krishna. Here it's recommended one chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the best, easiest, direct, most sublime and the most pleasant way to remember Krishna. It can be easily performed. It doesn't require anything but a tongue and two ears. Tongue for chanting, the ears for hearing the sound. And if we practice this as much as possible, but Prabhupada said, you know, he gave us a concession when he said 16 rounds is what is required in order to receive the shelter of the spiritual master. But actually, 16 rounds is just to get you going in devotional service. In other words, as Bhakti, I'm sorry, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, by chanting every day, one will chant always. And so the goal is to chant always. And throughout the scriptures, you'll find that this statement is being repeated one should always chant the holy names. One should always remember Krishna. Satam kirtayan tomam, as it says in the Bhagavad Gita, in the ninth chapter, verse number 14, 
Krishna says, Kirtaniya Sadahahi. Sada means always. The word always is used in connection with the holy name. So one should practice Krishna consciousness in such a way as one re, uh, is not deviated in mind for remembering Krishna. No matter what one's, do, one's doing, um, that activity, when it's used in the service of the Lord, will help one to remember Krishna. And gradually, we remember the activities that are being performed as simply a service to the Lord. And so the activities of devotional service help to purify our consciousness and help us fix our mind on Krishna. And of course, the time of death is the critical time. Sometimes people think, well, at the time of death, I'll remember Krishna, but right now I can't. I got so many other things I need to do and other responsibilities. But it's like, you know, Life is more like going to a university and death is like getting the final exam in order to get to graduate. So if you don't go to the university and take the tests and hear the lectures and do the homework, pass the smaller tests, then you can't just show up for the final exam and expect to pass it. So we have to prepare ourselves for that final exam, which is full consciousness of Krishna, because it says at the time of death, the mind will go through all of life's experiences and whatever is dear to you in your life at the time of death, your mind will focus on that. So by remembering Krishna, hearing about Krishna, developing an attraction for Krishna, through serving Krishna and serving Krishna it's by serving his devotees, then it becomes natural to remember Krishna at the time of death. But if we have any other desire that's stronger than our relationship with Krishna, that will be prominent at the time of death, which will cause one to, again to take birth in this material world. <laughs> so, therefore, uh, the statement is, uh, die before you die. In other words, die to those things that cause you to die. Because death is not for devotees. Transfer to a higher state of consciousness is what the devotees experience when they leave the body. Death is a word that is used for the non-devotees who are attached to the things of this world. Therefore, they die. Devotees don't die. They just leave one place and go to another. They, they leave their present material situation and go to a higher situation, uh, but ultimately that is not satisfactory. We want to go all the way back home, back to Godhead, because this process can deliver you to that supreme destination in this life if you practice seriously. So one should always be conscious of one's thoughts. What am I thinking of now? And then, of course, one should evaluate those thoughts and always bring the mind back to Krishna in some form or another. And of course, if we practice seriously our chanting japa every day, and then throughout the day it becomes easier to remember Krishna. And then as we go on with that activity, remembering Krishna becomes natural. As someone said to Prabhupada, oh, it's very difficult to remember for Krishna. Prabhupada said, difficult? It's difficult to forget him. <laughs> <laughs> So Prabhupada was giving us an understanding of, um, you know, what is real Krishna consciousness. How can we forget Krishna? Everything in, around us is created by Krishna. Everything around us is owned by Krishna. Everything around us is meant to be enjoyed by Krishna. And we are Krishna's servants. So becoming Krishna consciousness means to connect everything with Krishna, but especially sound. So therefore, if one needs to stay close to the transcendental sound vibration, especially the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So practicing chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra requires one to chant more and more and not simply finish your rounds. If you have this mentality that I get my rounds done and then the day actually begins, 
then you've missed the whole point. The day begins when you start chanting your rounds. That's when the day begins. Not when you finish your rounds and you can go on to the activities that you need to perform. So these rounds are actually prescribed in a numerical term, Sankhya Purnang. So we need to carefully chant our rounds, count those rounds, and see how many times we can chant more and more. Sixteen rounds is minimum. We also do that at the time of initiation. We ask the candidates that are coming forward for initiation, do you agree to chant at least 16 rounds on japa? And that's the emphasize that 16 is simply a minimum like that. Sometimes we stay that actually chanting begins on the 17th round. That's where chanting really begins. Why? Because the 16 we might be required to do, and so we do it out of an obligation. But when we, want, when we chant extra rounds for purification or just for some uh, satisfaction of the mind and heart, then we're actually entering into a realm of what we say devotional service where it becomes, you know, voluntary rather than re forced because of obligations. We do have obligations when it's required to st stick to those obligations and be expert at fulfilling those obligations. But when it comes to chanting, it's, um, there are so many statements. Prabhupada said, you know, 16 rounds is just the beginning. We should be able to chant always the holy name of the Lord. Or if we can't chant always, we should always be in the conscious of Krishna in some way or other. That's important. Krishna consciousness means consciousness of Krishna. <laughs> so you have a choice what to think about. Sometimes we think we don't have a choice. We're pulled by our desires. We're pulled by our, what we say, our habits that cause us to think and act in a certain way. Those things are there, but they're secondary to there. There are not only our, there are secondary material nature, they can be changed quite easily through practice. So by changing those through hearing and chanting more and more, and especially how do you get that inspiration by associating with devotees who are advanced in Krishna consciousness, who find great happiness in chanting the holy names and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So that association is very much sought after by those who are seriously on the path of devotional service. And uh, here, at the time of death, is actually a very difficult time. It's not easy. Uh, it says that sometimes the, the temperature of the body goes very high and then it drops quickly to a very cold state when death actually comes. So uh, the body and mind go into a lot of you know, struggles when the, the soul is de departing the body. So it's not easy to leave the body. So to be able to focus on Krishna at that time means to have that practice throughout one's life. Uh, sometimes we think it's so easy, but it's not. Usually people cry at the time of death or they go into some unconscious state and they die in a coma. Or they die thinking about, you know, what they forgot to do or what they want to do, although it's too late. So we have to be Krishna conscious now and then you'll be Krishna conscious when the important time comes and that is the time of death. So these verses are very uh, important verses. Uh, these are the verses that are quoted quite often. You know, we have the example of Bharat Maharaj, who, you know, he was on the stage of Bhava just prior to the stage of Prema. He had developed affection for Krishna in a genuine way, but without association, he found himself in the forest, and he became attracted to a baby deer, so much so that he gave up his spiritual practice, and when the time of death, he thought of the deer, and what happened, his next body was a deer's body. Fortunately, because he was 
such a great devotee and had slipped from the process of devotional service, he was given a certain concession that although he was in a deer's body, he remembered his previous life as a great devotee and he has started to associate with sadhus while he was in the deer's body and he would hear the sadhus speak and listen to them in the form of a deer. And so, of course, when he left his deer's body, he took birth again as Judd Bart, who was a, uh, what we say, an avidutta who followed no rules and regulations and always was in the highest consciousness of spirituality. And after that body, he went back home, back to Godhead. But he had to take two more bodies, one of the deer and another, body, another human body. So we don't want to somehow or other waste time because we don't know, you know, what type of body we might get in the next life. Nothing is guaranteed. We think, well, I'm a devotee, I'll get a good situation in my next life. But then you have to consider the fact that whatever stopped you from making it back to Godhead in the present life, that same desire will be there in the next life. So you have to fight it eventually. So better to fight it now and, and that waste time and never know what the next situation with, will be. So, yeah. Um, that's why this process of Krishna consciousness is, may, is a very a process of mercy by Lord Chaitanya. He's made the process quite simple and direct. Chant the holy names of the Lord. Eat Krishna prasadam. Associate and serve Vaishnavas. This is the essence of the practice of Krishna consciousness. Okay, these are some points we can think about. Questions? Comments? At the end, because we want to keep the topic. Yeah. We have a question on Facebook by Milan Malenic. Uh, many persons are in coma um, before leaving their body. So how this uh, state affects on their future destination? Hmm. Well, they say when one attains a coma, the higher powers are deciding what to do with that living being. So it's a situation that we want to avoid in a coma you're pretty much under the control of higher powers at that point. And they're deciding what will be your next body. So a devotee wants to be conscious during the time that he leaves his body. So coma is not something desirable at all. Hmm. question. We have a second question also by Milan Malenic. Bhaktisiddhanta Maharaj said that a person who doesn't chant 64 rounds should be considered fallen. So how to see this in relation to our 16 rounds? Well, we are following Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada has made concessions for the, for the Western devotees. In the Gaudiya Moth, it was required that anybody who stayed in the temple had to chant 64 rounds a day. Those who went out for, who went out for preaching, they could chant less. <laughs> so, and Prabhupada, our Prabhupada, when he began the movement, he requested us, the Westerners, in 1968, I think it was, to chant 64 rounds. And uh, the devotees, headed by one senior devotee at the time, uh, questioned Prabhupada and said, it's not possible for us to do that. So Prabhupada said 32 and no less. Discussion went on. And finally, Prabhupada conceded by saying 16 and, and no less. So as long as we follow our acharya, we can't follow Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Unless we are not... Uh, his direct disciples, we follow our Acharya, Srila Prabhupada, and he has given the formula, chant every day 16 good rounds, not just 16 rounds, 16 good rounds. 
So, um, yeah. Bhakti Siddhanta established that for the Gaudiya Math. But Prabhupada was dealing with us Westerners who can't even chant 16 rounds, what to speak of chanting 64. We have a hard time chanting 16 rounds. And sometimes we give up our chanting because we think it's too difficult. <laughs> so Prabhupada knew how fallen we were. We couldn't chant like that. So he said, all right, do, do devotional service then. Stay active. Use your mind, the senses, your body. In the service of the Lord, that'll help to purify you where you can be able to chant easier and more, more with more quality. Any other questions? Christians say, oh, I lost it. Hmm. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, Christians also say that uh, we continue to spiritually advance even after death, but they don't do not accept reincarnation. So, what is the enigma of their teaching? What is the question? Whether they ex they don't accept reincarnation? Yeah, they don't do not accept reincarnation, but they. Uh, say state that we spiritually advance even after that so well there are different kinds of christians there are christians who do set reincarnations they're in the minority of course but reincarnation is a fact it's not a, just a religious opinion <clears throat> it's a scientific principle science is not debatable by you know well belief whether you believe something is true or not doesn't make it true or not. I believe the sun rises in the west. Well, you can believe that, but the sun will continue to rise in the east. So your belief doesn't make anything true. The fact is that the soul uh, accumulates activities in this life based on the, its desires, and therefore... It forces one, and it's called the, the law of action and reaction. And the transmigration is that the, the mind and this, the mind, the intelligence, the false ego takes the soul to the next body according to one's consciousness at the time of death. death. So that's a scientific fact. It's not just some idea. It can be scientifically proven also. <clears throat> So whether you accept it or not, it doesn't matter. It's true. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so they say, at least I remember I was brought up a Christian. When you die, you go to heaven, hell, or somewhere in between. There's a thing called purgatory where you sit in there for a while and you burn off some of your bad things and then you go up to heaven after that. But they say hell is eternal and heaven's eternal. But we question that because God is not such a cruel person that he would condemn a person to hell eternally. <laughs> uh, you always have a chance for rectification. Just like even in, if you are a criminal, you're put in jail. But if you rectify yourself, you can go back into the mainstream society and become a, you know, a good citizen. So 
sinful activities do force one to suffer, but one can overcome those and again uh, raise themselves up. So we don't accept the idea that hell or any heavenly realm is eternal. These things are also places you stop with depending on your karma. If you, the verse, the verse in the Bhagavad Gita says, you know, uh, people go up according to their, you know, those in the mode of goodness, they go up to the higher planets, those in the mode of passion, they stay on this planet, and those of those of mode of ignorance, they go down to the lower planets, hellish planets. Okay, that's it. So. Finished? Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Another question? Okay, sure. Uh, great saints and sages are afraid that at the time of death they will be disturbed by this bile and that they will be suffocating and uh, so how to and, the, and that they will not be able to remember krishna so how to avoid these states states well if you're actually remembering krishna krishna will help you it's not that you remember Krishna and you do all the work. When you remember Krishna, Krishna is present. And Krishna will help you. But it, you know, sometimes it's said like, it's said like that. That it's not good to die in a state of too much disease because then it becomes more difficult. So try to die healthy. <laughs> healthy death. In other words, you know, prepare yourself now that when it's time for death, you are able to remember Krishna. I mean, uh, yeah, we have that prayer, but King Kulur Shekhar, Krishna Tadi Apadatam Padweta Sutitume Parada. I can't remember the verse. He's praying. You know, while I'm young and my my mind is strong, let me now remember you and immediately die. So because when I get old and my body gets choked up with mucus, bile, and air, it becomes very difficult to remember you. So there is a prayer by that great saint, King Kulu Shekhar, who was a who was a very strong devotee of Lord Ramchandra. So yeah. So we pray to the Lord that we don't get affected by these bodily, you know, what we say, disturbances. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Kijai.